Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to our webinar on new transfer pricing regulations in Poland, enforced since January 1, 2017. The presenters for today are going to be Agnieszka Czajaniak, Manager in Transfer Pricing Group at MDDP, and Marta Klepac, Transfer Pricing Senior Consultant at MDDP. Should you have any questions during the webinar, please type into the question chat box and we will answer you at the end of the presentation. Dear Marta and Agnieszka, I give you the floor. Uh, welcome everyone uh, on our webcast. The aim of our webcast is to provide you with information about uh, changes which took place in transfer pricing in Poland in 2017. We will provide you with information in a nutshell uh, during this hour. Uh, transfer pricing is quite a hot topic nowadays in Poland. Especially for about last two or three years, we have observed that there are much more transfer pricing audits in Poland performed by tax authorities, especially from transfer pricing perspective. What's more, transfer pricing audits are not, some, not so simple nowadays in Poland. Uh, the tax authorities ask not only for transfer pricing uh, documentation, but try to ask quite difficult questions in order to identify TP risk, which allow to make really significant transfer pricing uh, reassessment of income. From recent transfer pricing news in Poland, quite important is implementation of new transfer pricing regulation by the Polish Ministry of Finance. The transfer pricing regulation cover information which should be included in the new transfer pricing documentation. The regulation is very crucial for uh, taxpayers, especially during preparation on, of transfer pricing documentation, because the transfer pricing regulation explains precisely what information should be included in local file and master file documentation. What's more, uh, it clarifies also what should be understood in particular elements of the local file and master file documentation, which uh, was defined in the Corporate Income Tax Act, which uh, implements uh, preparation of local file and master file documentation in Poland. What's more, uh, transfer pricing uh, it's, um, it's very crucial, and uh, it is known also by Polish government, because in respect to TP, uh, recently, the National Revenue Administration uh, informed that there is a plan to create a transfer pricing forum in Poland. And the aim of this transfer pricing forum will be a discussion about transfer pricing issues between tax administration and the business people. The meetings of transfer pricing forum will be held uh, uh, two times per year. And the forum will discuss uh, the significant transfer pricing topics and clarifies all the queries from the business people. Uh, the forum will be very similar to EU Joint Transfer Pricing Forum, which exists at EU level. What's more, Polish Ministry of Finance has set up recently new department uh, for transfer pricing and valuation, and this new um, department will be engaged in uh, forming creation of transfer pricing policy. Uh, we'll be engaged also in developing of transfer pricing guidelines for taxpayers and prepare transfer pricing solutions. So it's, it's a very important body now in the Polish Ministry of Finance. What's more, uh, recently also uh, the preliminary draft budget for fiscal year 2018 was published uh, by the Polish government. In this uh, draft budget, income, uh, tax income, will be resulted especially from tax collection activities, which will come from uh, income taxes, especially from transfer pricing. Okay, next slide, please. Uh, since 1st January 2017, Poland has introduced the most substantial changes to the Polish transfer pricing regulations since many years. 
and uh, TP regulations uh, are based on the OECD BEPS Action 13 de development, uh, so some changes uh, will be compliant with what is proposed by the OECD and within BEPS works, but some uh, requirements, TP requirements in Poland are completely new and not common uh, in other uh, countries, European countries. Uh, what is very important is that the smallest taxpayers uh, with uh, revenues or costs, depending which uh, amount is higher, uh, are below 2 million euro, are exempted for, from transfer pricing. So there are no transfer pricing obligations for these taxpayers. Uh, taxpayers with revenues uh, or uh, which revenues or costs are, are above 2 million euro are obliged to present to prepare local site documentation and additionally are obliged to fill the statement that the local file is prepared. This statement is a completely new requirement in Poland and must be feel, uh, filled to tax authorities by, by the date of filling of tax return for a particular year. Additional obligation is the preparation of benchmarking study. Uh, benchmarking study is an obligatory element of transfer pricing documentation for those taxpayers uh, for which revenues or costs in the previous tax year were above two, uh, 10 million euro. Benchmarking studies are something new in Poland because they were not obligatory previously and it would be for sure a challenge. What's more, there is a completely new requirement, so-called CIT TP form. It will be an appendix to the tax return and this uh, appendix will include information about intercompany transactions with related party which took place in, in the analyzed year and uh, this form should be filled together with the tax return. For the biggest taxpayers there is also an obligation to prepare uh, master file documentation for those taxpayers for which uh, revenues are above 20 million euro for the previous years. And in Poland, we have also obligation of preparation of CBC report, but only those um, capital groups which consolidated revenues are above uh, 750 million euro for the previous tax year. Uh, new transfer pricing regulations precisely specify the deadlines for preparation for preparation of all transfer pricing obligations and the first deadline will be free uh, will be the deadline for uh, submission of uh, tax return in Poland so it is uh, three months after the year end during this time um, the taxpayers should prepare local file and benchmarking analysis fill the CIT TP form and also fill the statement confirming that the local file is prepared to the tax authorities. What's more, uh, the local file uh, should, could be supplemented with all financial data uh, within 10 days after approval of the financial statement. So it's an exception for the local file that all the financial data could be supplemented uh, later, not uh, till the uh, end of March 2018. In case of master file, master file should be ready at the date of submission of the annual tax return of the company from the group which is obliged uh, for preparation of the master file. Uh, in Polish transfer pricing regulations there are also changes connected with establishing uh, transactional uh, limits. Mm, till the uh, 2017, uh, there was a fixed uh, transactional threshold, which you can uh, see uh, in the slide, mm, depending on the type of the transaction. So, for example, for the provision of services and transactions related to assets, mm, the transactional threshold was uh, 30,000 euros. 
now the so from uh, 2017 the transactional thresholds are establishing on the basis of the revenues uh, generated by the taxpayer in the previous tax year as Agnieszka said, uh, in case of taxpayers uh, which uh, revenues or costs are below 2 million euros, there is no obligation related to transfer pricing documentation. Um, and for the taxpayers which revenues or costs exceed 2 million euros, uh, there are some of uh, TP documentation obligations. Um, as far as the transactional thresholds are concerned, um, there is uh, establishing a kind of mechanism uh, which is presented in the slide and uh, the first uh, transactional threshold for the taxpayer is uh, 50,000 euros and this is uh, in case of taxpayer whose revenues uh, exceed uh, is in range of uh, 2 uh, to 3 million euros and then uh, the, uh, the transactional threshold is increased by 5,000 euro for every 1 million euro of revenues over 2 million euros. You can see it uh, on the next slide on the um, diagram and I think uh, it uh, will be easier to understand. Um, and then and there is a different range of uh, revenues from uh, 20 million to 100 million and uh, in case of such taxpayer, the first transactional threshold is 140,000 euro and then increased by uh, 45,000 uh, euro for every 10 million euros revenues over 20 million euro. And then for the taxpayer whose revenues exceed 100 million euro, the threshold is fixed. It is uh, 5,000 uh, euros. And in the next slide, please, uh, you can see uh, all of the transactional threshold obliged uh, to taxpayer. So we uh, started, as I said, uh, with uh, 50,000 euros uh, for the taxpayer whose revenues is in range uh, between 2 to 3 million euros. And then 55,000 euros for the taxpayer whose revenues uh, is between 3 to 4 million euros and so on and so forth till uh, the uh, last transactional threshold which uh, is um, obligatory for a taxpayer whose revenues uh, exceed 100 million euros. And now we can move in the next slide to the um, particular elements of transfer pricing obligation and starting for uh, local file documentation, which as Agnieszka said is obligatory for the taxpayers whose revenues or costs exceed 2 uh, million euros. Uh, this documentation uh, is, um, needs to be uh, prepared, uh, as Agnieszka said, uh, the submission of the annual tax return, but the financial data ex uh, description related to the financial statement of the taxpayer can be supplemented within 10 days from approval of the financial statement. But uh, we talk about um, not uh, submission of the documentation, but only uh, declaring by the taxpayer that such a local file documentation was prepared. Uh, as far as the submission of local file documentation is concerned, uh, there are still uh, seven days upon request uh, for the, uh, from the tax authorities. And there is a new term, uh, 30 days upon request, in, in case of transaction uh, which uh, not exceed transactional threshold, but tax authorities suspend that such transaction can be um, related to not arm's length nature. Uh, and what covers local file? It covers transactions as uh, till uh, 2017 and since 2017 there is also a category of other events and there are some examples of such categories like liquidity management, joint ventures, consortium. Such other events also need to be covered by the local file in case of exceeding a particular transactional threshold. Uh, the local file can be divided in uh, two parts, uh, general part and transactional part. 
and in general part uh, the information about taxpayers should be included, uh, such as organizational and management structure, subject and scope of, act of activities, business strategies, and competitive environment. And what is important, uh, the, the, this information needs to be strictly connected and related with the um, business activity of the taxpayer, not of the group. Uh, also, the local fund needs to, uh, need to cover financial data related to the taxpayer, such as uh, data from financial statement and documents such related to the transactions, such as agreement and uh, other documents, for example, invoices, and also agreements concluded with tax administration, such as advanced pricing agreements. And next slide uh, is about transactional part of local file. Uh, in uh, this part, uh, the um, information about particular transactions needs to be included. Uh, as we can see, there is a type and subject of the transaction, uh, financial data related to the transaction, identification of relation between parties conducted the particular transactions, description of the transaction, uh, so separate functional analyse analysis for each type of transaction or other event, including also functional profiles. And uh, the most important element, method and manner of calculating uh, income, including justification of chosen method, and also algorithm of calculating remuneration for the um, transaction. And what is uh, important and good uh, news uh, for the taxpayer, uh, there is no need to include the documentation form and term of payment. Uh, this element was uh, most often missing in the local file preparing at the group level, and now it is not an obligatory element. Mm, and what is uh, needs to be remembered that the local file prepared by the group can be used, um, but there are some specific uh, Polish elements which need to be supplemented by, by the taxpayer. And as Agnieszka said, uh, the, um, in case of taxpayer whose revenues or costs exceed 10 million euros, also benchmarking study is an obligatory element of local file. And in the next slide, uh, we will tell you more about this obligation. Okay, so benchmarking analysis should be prepared only by taxpayers whose revenues or costs are above uh, 10 million euro. And we should remember that the benchmarking analysis uh, are a part of the local file. So the analysis uh, should be prepared and should be uh, properly and should properly justify the arm's length uh, remuneration in the transaction. Uh, the Polish regulation, uh, which uh, I mentioned at the beginning of our webinar, um, precisely specifies which elements should be covered in the benchmarking analysis. So during preparation of such benchmarking analysis, we should address all the elements which are specified in the Polish transfer pricing regulation because it's a requirement of the Polish tax authorities. Uh, benchmarking analysis uh, could be prepared in one of two options. It could be prepared as a as an internal uh, analysis or external analysis, but we should remember that in case the uh, internal or external analysis is, is not possible to prepare, the Polish tax authorities uh, oblige taxpayers to prepare a special justification in a form of so-called description of the compliance. Description of, a, of, of the compliance is something new in the Polish law, but it's a justification that the terms of the transaction, the terms of the intercompany transactions, is uh, in compliance with the market conditions. Uh, at this stage, we do not have exact information how this description should look like. From our practice and from our experience, uh, it should for sure uh, include all the qualitative information and all, all the business justification defending that the prices are, are, are at arm's length. Uh, as, a, as I said earlier, benchmarking analysis is an element of the local file and in case of 
preparation, uh, it should be prepared together with the local file doc documentation. So in case of a tox tax audit, uh, we should submit the benchmarking analysis together with the local file documentation. And what's more, uh, uh, next slide please, uh, transfer pricing regulations uh, specify uh, pre precisely that the benchmarking analysis should be based in Poland uh, based on Polish comparables if they are available. So this could be a problem in case of uh, using group benchmarking analysis because uh, usually uh, group benchmarking analysis are based on pan-European or sea market uh, comparables and it could not be accepted by the Polish tax authorities because Polish transfer pricing regulations nowadays in Poland specify that uh, the analysis should be based only on Polish comparables. So in case we use pan-European data, we should have a good argumentation why we rejected Polish comparables and used pan-European ones. We should remember that. Uh, from our practice, we start, if we had uh, such cases that during tax audits, which covered uh, the previous years, uh, before 2017, that the Polish tax authorities rejected uh, pan-European benchmarking analysis and requested for the Polish uh, benchmarking analysis based on the Polish comparables. The other brand new obligation for the taxpayer is CITTP or PITTP in case of partners of partnerships. And it is an obligatory uh, for uh, the taxpayer whose income or cost exceed in the current year 10 million euros. And uh, this is a simplified statement on transaction and other events between related entities. In fact, uh, it is not so simplified. But the Minister of Finance said that it is simplified because the taxpayer do not need to supplement particular information about value of the transaction, but tick the box uh, with the ranges, um, for example, of values of the transaction. So that, that is the reason what it is called simplified. And the purpose of the introduction of such a statement, which is uh, typical for a Polish jurisdiction, uh, is to type taxpayers and also the transaction or other events to be the subject of potential, potential tax control in the, in the field of transfer pricing. The deadline uh, for uh, submitting the CITTP is the submission of the annual tax return and it is the attachment for uh, the tax return. As, uh, and as uh, it was said, uh, now uh, the um, tax authorities don't fish uh, the taxpayers uh, and uh, wait um, what will be occurred uh, during the tax control, but they will shoot to the dark because they will know what kind of transactions uh, is concluded uh, by the taxpayer with related parties and what is uh, the functional profile of the taxpayer. Uh, so uh, they will uh, choose uh, the taxpayers and, uh, and the transactions to be the subject of the potential control. You can see that uh, the CITTP is divided into six main categories. Data, identifying the taxpayer, identification of taxpayers' relationships with related parties, information about related uh, entities, uh, it is information about uh, geographical uh, markets of related entities, main taxpayer business activity and functional profile, and uh, in such of this uh, category, this section, uh, the taxpayer needs to uh, check what kind of functional profile is its main profile, for example, uh, limited risk distribution or uh, service provider, and it is necessary to verify uh, now what kind of functional profile is the uh, taxpayer and uh, to check if the information in uh, local file, master file and benchmarking study are coherent with the statement because uh, tax authorities will have now uh, a lot of uh, transfer pricing documents and it is very important to be coherent with each of, the, uh, of those documents. 
The next uh, section is restructuring uh, transaction, and um, this is restructuring in the meaning of transfer pricing, uh, transfer of significant function, assets, or risk uh, with re with, within the group, uh, with related parties, but also uh, joint ventures uh, and uh, the changes in the organizational structure of the group. And it is also uh, needs to underline that the taxpayer needs to uh, to show the tax authorities if any remuneration, so-called exit fee, uh, was established for uh, such restructuring. And the last uh, the last section is related party transaction or other events. And this section is divided into six subsections uh, connected with the particular categories of transaction, such as management fees, uh, financial transaction, um, and so on and so forth. And uh, the taxpayer needs to check uh, in the account books uh, what uh, kind of remuneration was established for, uh, for those transactions in 2017 and check the proper box uh, in the CITTP form. Okay, and additionally what I want to add yes. is that a CITTP form, filling of CITTP form can be quite challenging for yes. taxpayers because many uh, information should be filled and uh, it will support the work of Polish tax authorities in order to choose the best taxpayers for the tax audit purposes. So we should be aware of what we are reporting to the tax authorities and information presented in the CITTP form should be compliant with the local file uh, documentation, master file documentation. We should be aware of this uh, fact. Yeah, exactly. Okay, and at the next slide, uh, please. Uh, we can see the obligation of mass preparing group documentation, so-called master file. Uh, it is an obligatory document for the taxpayer whose revenues or costs in the previous tax year exceed 20 million euros. And as Agnieszka said, the deadline for uh, possessing uh, such documentation is until the date of submission of the tax return by the group entity preparing uh, the master file. And the master for documentation is information about the group of related entities. And at the next slide, please, we can uh, see the elements which need to be uh, covered by, by the group documentation. Particularly, the, uh, the Polish requirements are in line with OACD guidelines. But there are, of course, uh, some additional elements which need to be included by the Polish taxpayer. Uh, and uh, within uh, talking about uh, this situation with the representatives of, Min of Minister of Finance, uh, we hear that uh, Polish taxpayers should not um, make any changes in the group document, but to prepare an uh, attachment. Uh, to the master file in which the missing uh, obligatory elements will be supplemented. And what uh, elements need to be included in the master file? Firstly, information about entity obliged to prepare master file and date of submission of its tax, tax return. Then group description with organizational structure and also the description of group uh, main activities but also geographical markets and uh, key business factors. Uh, and what is important, the master file should also include a value added chain analysis and describing restructuring uh, events, uh, most important from the perspective of group. Uh, then there is an obligation to include in the master file uh, transfer pricing policy. Um, for services, intangible assets, and financing activities, but also for any other crucial transactions for, from the perspective of the group. Uh, then next section is description of intangible assets uh, and its possession, creation, developing ex exploitation. The taxpayer is also obliged to 
uh, indicate any changes during the year uh, in case of uh, possessing and creation of intangible assets. What is also important, uh, the main R&D uh, centers need to be included in the master file documentation. And by the meaning of main R&D centers, uh, there are the centers with the significant and the largest number of people uh, which are working uh, in such center. And one of the most uh, important elements is also financing of the group. Um, and we would like to underline that uh, in the master file documentation, according to Polish transfer pricing regulations, there is a need to include a list of significant external loans and credits. And to describe the financial situation of the group as well as external financing. And the taxpayer are also obliged to indicate uh, all of advanced pricing uh, agreements uh, which are concluded uh, with the jurisdiction within the group. Okay, and what's more, master file documentation is uh, completely a new requirement in Poland. Uh, so the Polish tax authorities uh, do not have any experience with master file documentation. Therefore, we should be aware of that. And the information presented in the master file, as I said earlier, should be compliant with what we will present in the local file. In case of inconsistencies, we should uh, be aware that uh, they should be clarified in the local file or in the master file during communication with, the, with our headquarter. Uh, what more? Uh, usually, the Polish subsidiaries will for sure receive master file documentation from headquarters or from other group companies. And uh, in this respect, we recommend to verify the information which are included in the master file documentation in order to verify whether the information covered address all obligatory elements which should be included in the master file. Because we are aware that there are some differences between uh, different countries in Europe uh, in respect to the requirements uh, to the master file approach. And for example, in respect to the thresholds which require taxpayer to prepare master file documentation. So on this uh, aspect, the, the taxpayers should be aware. Okay, and the next slide, please. The next uh, new requirement is preparation of country by country re reporting. The uh, transfer pricing regulations in respect to CBCR are almost the same as uh, proposed by the OECD within BEPSWORKS. So they are almost the same, also within other countries in Europe. Uh, CBC report should be prepared by the capital groups for the biggest, but, uh, should be prepared by the biggest capital groups, which consolidated revenues for the previous financial year are above 750 million euro. CBC report is the uh, information about a group of related entities and includes the same information as uh, proposed by the OECD. So in the CBC report, we will uh, include information about the global allocation of profits uh, in the group, the amount of taxes paid by the uh, specific countries, and the types of economic activities performed by the subsidiaries within the group. Um, the party which is obliged to fill the CBC report in Poland is the ultimate owner of the group or other entity which is appointed within the group to submit a CBC report. CBC report should be filled electronically. Uh, nowadays, we do not have a, a template. We have templates, but we do not have uh, online form of the CBC report, so we are waiting for it. And this uh, report should be filled to the head of the National Revenue Administration. In our Polish transfer pricing regulation, 
there is a cash penalty in case CBC report will not be filled, and the penalty amounts to 1 million uh, police zloty, so it's quite high and material for taxpayers. Uh, next slide, please. The deadline uh, for submission of CBC report is 12 months from the end of the financial year, so it's the same as in other European countries. Uh, and the, the first uh, year for which we should uh, fill the CBC report is the fiscal year 2017. So in case the, the fiscal year of the taxpayer equals to calendar year, the submission of the CBC report for 2017 should be performed till the end of uh, December 2017. We have in Poland also an obligation to submit CBC notification. CBC notification is a notification about an obligation to prepare CBC report. And CBC notification should be filled by entities which belong to capital groups which are obliged to submit CBC report. And um, all the subsidiaries and all the permanent establishments in Poland should fill such uh, CBC notification. What is more, uh, CBC notification should be filled to the head of National Revenue Administration and uh, should be filled in electronic form, which is published by the Ministry of Finance, or should be filled uh, in writing directly, directly to the head of the National Revenue Administration. The, the sanctions for not fulfilling of CBC notification are the same as for CBC report. So uh, the cash penalty amounts to 1 million police lotte. The same. In case of deadlines, uh, the first uh, deadline for CBC notification was the end of the October. Uh, the end of October. Um, we are obliged to uh, fill the CBC notification for uh, 2016. Uh, 2016 is the transitional period, and the deadline for this first year is 10 months after the end of the financial year. So it was the end of October. Uh, the next uh, obligation is to fill the CBC notification for 2017. And fiscal year 2017, there is a general principle. We should fill the CBC notification uh, at the last day of the financial year. So in case our fiscal year is equal to calendar year, we should fill CBC notification for 2017 till the end of December 2017. So as I said, um, we would like to present you some information about areas of interest of tax authorities in the field uh, of transfer pricing from uh, our experience uh, within uh, tax audits. And um, these areas are shared service centers and also uh, marketing centers, uh, especially uh, which are located uh, in tax havens and the tax authorities now uh, need to get an um, information about substance and uh, actual uh, activities of uh, such marketing centers. Um, one of the areas of interest of tax authorities are also intangible services, uh, particularly management fees. And if uh, the remuneration for management uh, fees and the cost uh, related uh, with this transaction is uh, increasing um, and the revenues of the Polish taxpayer uh, at the same time decreasing, uh, it could be a potential area of interest of tax authorities and uh, Polish taxpayer needs to be prepared to justify uh, the management fees by gathering proper evidence of uh, performing such uh, services and presenting them to the tax authorities. There is also a need to present benefits uh, from such services um, in order uh, to uh, not only uh, 
not only uh, the stack deductible cost areas, but also in the field of uh, transfer pricing and arm's length nature of uh, performing such services. Uh, the other area of interest of tax authorities is uh, restructuring, especially in the meaning of transfer significant functions, assets and risk. Polish tax authorities asking about remuneration uh, for uh, such, uh, such occurrences uh, and when the exit fee or remuneration is not paid or a restructuring documentation is not prepared, uh, it is an issue uh, for the tax uh, for the Polish tax authorities. Mm, the group financing transactions are also in the area of interest of Polish uh, tax authorities, especially loans um, and the arm's length nature of the remuneration for such transaction. And the last one which we indicate is license fee, uh, especially related to the transactions with entity from tax haven. And in case uh, of uh, such transaction, also uh, the tax authorities examine the uh, arm's length nature uh, of uh, such existing of such entities, and uh, and also uh, the um, substance of uh, placing such entity in the uh, tax haven. And we would like to also give you a piece of uh, information on the numbers uh, why transfer pricing issues are more popular uh, within uh, tax control. Uh, we would uh, we will give you some uh, financial information about tax control and uh, we uh, with comparison of 2015 and 2016 as uh, as as you can see the number of tax audits regarding transfer pressure issue increased 36% um, in case of commenced tax controls and 119% uh, in case of ended tax controls. So you can see that the transfer pricing is a bigger issue to the tax authorities and uh, according to the changes in the transfer pricing regulation, the, there will be the more popular area for the estimation of the income of taxpayers uh, and verifying whether all of obligations are met and uh, if the um, significant transactions concluded with related party are at arm's length level. Um, so the transfer pricing uh, new requirements in Poland are quite challenging and we have observed it also uh, at the project uh, to our clients that uh, the companies have problems with transfer pricing and with fulfilling of the new requirements in order to prepare everything on time and to fulfill all the obligations. Uh, the new obligations uh, depend on the revenues and costs of the taxpayers, so they depend on the size of the taxpayer. Uh, in case the revenues are higher, the transfer pricing requirements are also much more demanding. Uh, since uh, January uh, 2017, the transfer pricing documentation should be prepared in an extended form, and it requires much more uh, much more information than for previous years. So the different uh, approach should be taken uh, during uh, preparation of the transfer pricing documentation nowadays. And uh, for sure, it will be much more time consuming than previously. Taxpayers are obliged to prepare since 2017 new documents, such as master file documentation, CIT TP form, CBC report, and CBC notification, and it uh, extends the reporting obligation of the taxpayers. Uh, the new uh, requirement is also covering by transfer pricing reg regulations the partnerships. Partnerships were not obliged previously till the end of 2017 to uh, transfer pricing, but the, the, uh, now they are covered by the transfer pricing regulation, so it's something new. The transfer pricing documentation should cover all intercompany transactions with related 
parties above the statutory thresholds. But we should remember that not only IC transactions should be covered by uh, documentation, but also other events also should be included. What's more, benchmarking studies are an obligatory part of the local file. And uh, we should remember that the benchmarking studies should be based on the Polish comparables. And the last stage is the relations. The capital relations are increased from 5% to 25%. It means that we have relations with uh, particular taxpayers in case we have above 25% of shares in it. And we must remember also that we should uh, identify not only capital relations, but also family, property, or employment relations with other parties. But uh, these relations refer only to the country level. To summarize, uh, for sure an appropriate approach should be taken to prepare properly for all transfer pricing new requirements. And for sure, a specific communication should be uh, with uh, headquarters and with other companies from the group in order to properly prepare for for the new new TP requirements. Yeah, and uh, those activities connected with preparation for new obligations should start it uh, at this moment because it is time-consuming process. And in order to be sure that all of the uh, documents are compliant, and are compliant not only with the um, transfer pricing documentation prepared by taxpayer, but also with group materials. Uh, in order to ensure that it will be compliant and consistent, uh, the activities should be taken uh, at this moment. Yes, that's right. So from our side, that's all. Thank you, Marta and Agnieszka, for your presentation. Uh, we have some questions, and I read now the first one. OK. Where the master file is prepared abroad, in English, for example, is it required to have Polish translation prepared by an official translator, or is it likely that the free translation will be accepted? Uh, yeah, the uh, pre-translation would also be accepted by the Polish tax authorities. And uh, we as MDDP also uh, support taxpayers in order to uh, in order to translate such documents. Second question is, is there any comparable database that is available to tax authorities which they can use and do their own research and use as an argument against the taxpayers? Okay, so uh, at this moment we know that uh, Polish tax authorities use different databases uh, for performance of benchmarking analysis, but they are quite the same as we are <laughs> using during our daily works and is used by uh, and are used by other tax advisors, so they are commonly and widely applied by the transpressing practitioners. Yeah, and there is a special department also, Lukas, in uh, Poland, uh, which supports tax authorities in order to prepare benchmarking study within tax control. So the tax authorities nowadays have uh, an access to all, most, mostly, yes. to all of the databases mm -hmm. in order to prepare benchmarking study. And they have uh, also capital, uh, and they have also people uh, which ca who can perform such analysis? So for sure, uh, the tax authorities can double check the benchmarking analysis which is prepared by the company and could compare their results with the results of the taxpayer. Do you still need to provide a notification if the multinational parent elects the surrogate entity to file in other country, which has a multilateral agreement signed with Poland? Furthermore. If a notification was filed and now the reporting entity has changed, what is the timeline to change that notification? Okay. So the question is quite complicated, but um, 
What we have observed that in case of difficult questions in respect to CBC notification, we can leverage on the reports which were published by the OECD in respect to CBC report and CBC notification. So we would refer to to read what is written there. Uh, because at this stage it's, it's difficult to to analyze the case and we can do it after the webcast and we will provide a reply. Can you please address the concept of the multilateral agreement and how this works with Poland before, okay, before the end of the webcast? I think this will play a critical role for a number of taxpayers. Okay, yeah, we can address this uh, after the webcast, uh, but at this stage there are um, not so many agreements signed with countries within the um, multilateral, multilateral instruments. Yeah, but we will address it afterwards. Okay, last question. Can the master file be submitted in English? So we can, oh. but the Polish tax authorities can ask for translation. Right. Thank you so much, Martin Agnieszka, and I would also thank like you. to thank all attendees for joining us today. And you will find the recording of our presentation on our website, cpaglobal.com, by the end of the week.